Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming on to the show today. I'm really excited about our chat. We're going to have some quick fire questions. Um, but first of all, can you just tell everybody who's watching today uh, what you do and um, a little bit about your background? Hi, everyone. I am Sarah Newman. I run a company called Get Me Back, um, which is a fitness training company for people affected by cancer. Um, so I'm a cancer and exercise specialist. I retrained to do this job after my own cancer diagnosis in 2018. And I found a real struggle to um, understand what was safe and effective um, exercise wise for me to do after my treatment. So I set up my company and um, I have been training women and men over the last five years to really help them rebuild their strength and their fitness before, during and after cancer. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. And I thought we can just fire some kind of random questions. Well, actually, these are questions that uh, people have asked me. Um, and so, you know, I thought I'd just ask you because you're the expert. So um, you're right with that? Yeah. Okay, so the first question is very simple. Why should people even bother exercising? Well, everybody should exercise, not just the people who've had cancer, um, but it has huge impacts physically and mentally. Um, so physically, if you've had cancer, um, and if you haven't as well, it can benefit um, your your heart, your lungs, your cardiovascular system. Um, it can help you build muscle um, in a good way that will help strengthen your joints um, and your bone density. Um, it also is amazing for your mental health, so it can help with anxiety, um, it can help um, manage depression, or it can just help manage your mood and your sleep as well. So there are so many benefits of exercise. Unfortunately, I don't know any side effects really, um, <laughs> apart from maybe an occasional ache after a workout, but that shouldn't be too severe. So um, exercise generally is hugely beneficial before, during and after cancer treatment, really trying to get that message out there because not everyone knows that those benefits exist. Um, from a cancer point of view, exercise can hugely help you manage the side effects of treatment. So things like chemotherapy, the cancer-related fatigue that you might get with your treatment, exercise is really a medicine to help you with these symptoms. So um, key Keep up the movement, even when you're feeling at your worst, because it could have a, a real benefit and make you feel more energized and actually reduce some of those those symptoms that you're getting as a result of your treatment. Oh, brilliant. Um, and also, we know that exercise um, has an impact on outcome after of um, after cancer diagnosis. Um, it increases, yeah, it reduces the risk of recurrence uh, of breast cancer. We know that it also improves outcome. So on top of all that, um, as well as all the benefits that you've described, um, there's no real reason why, um, you know, we shouldn't be exercising. So yeah, definitely everybody, we ought to be trying to at least move to a degree every day, um, even if you're not kind of going to the gym. So definitely exercise is of benefit. Um, the other question that many people ask me is why do we need to do strength training? Why is strength training um, an important part of our exercise routine? So strength training um, after cancer, particularly for women, is really important. So um, as a result of your treatment, many women are put into a medical menopause um, or have been through a, a, a lower in their hormone levels, which can put them at risk from osteoporosis, but also means that their joints and bones might be a little bit weaker. So strength training is a great way to help increase your bone density, help with the, the range of movement through your joints, also help build the muscle mass that you might have lost as a result of treatment. So it keeps everything in your body nice and strong. Um, and also the research coming out now is showing that being fit and strong can help actually improve the outcomes of your treatment. So it can help it work more effectively, the more muscle mass that you have, but also it means that you might be able to tolerate it for longer, which it means it can be more effective and hopefully work on those cancer cells more effectively. So strength training, generally, um, you need the okay from your oncology team before you get started, but you can exercise during your treatment. You can strength train during your treatment and trying to maintain that muscle mass 
um, during your chemotherapy particularly is going to be hugely beneficial for you and your recovery as well. So you can um, strength train or exercise during chemotherapy. Can you do it uh, before your treatment starts and afterwards? Uh, you know, say for example, you've had surgery. I would say before um, you have surgery or chemotherapy, you want to get yourself as physically fit and strong as possible. So um, doing a, a combination of cardiovascular and strengthening exercises to make sure that you are feeling strong before you go and face um, the, the surgical and procedure that you have to have or the, or the treatment that you need and after treatment as long as you've got the on cl all clear from your oncology team or your surgical team um, I would get back to exercising as soon as you're able and that combination again of the cardiovascular activity so walking cycling running swimming and the strength training is going to um, give you the best outcome to make sure that you can continue doing functional things every day you know like getting in and out of a chair it might seem very straightforward but if you're losing muscle mass it's going to become harder and we want to exercise to live a long and um, fulfilled life because I think really actually if we're building those muscles and making sure that our joints and bones are strong at a younger age it means that at an older age we're going to be living a better quality of life being able to do a lot of those functional things for longer. Brilliant that's a really that's really um, that's a really important message isn't it. Um, I've been asked um, many times, um, somebody has had cancer surgery, mastectomy, breast conservation surgery, um, and they uh, really wanted to get back to exercise. How often, or well, how quickly can they go back to exercise? Obviously, as you said, you know, once they've got the okay from their surgeons, but also what kind of exercises should they be doing? So straight after surgery, um, I hope you will agree with this recommendation is that walking is pretty much okay from day dot, as long as you are comfortable and you're accompanied in those early days. Um, yeah. So keeping up that cardiovascular activity um, as quickly as you can, and then building that up slowly. So getting outside for a walk every single day is key. Um, then we want to start to introduce um, strength training. And this is when the oncology team need to say, yay, you can go green light. Um, and then what we need to do is just very gently start to introduce those exercises. So starting with body weight exercises, using your weight to stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down in that squat position, great for strengthening legs. And you don't need anything additional at that early stage. Um, you can also do things uh, like stepping up onto a step coming back down again doing that several times going up and down stairs that's almost like a lunge which is a strength based move so that's great right. for strengthening the legs and then when you've got the mobility so keeping up those um exercises that the physio will give you after your surgery when you get that mobility back start to introduce some strength based exercises in the upper body so starting light really light resistance bands or bean tins to begin with focusing on exercises where you're strengthening your back so things like a bent over row where you're pulling the weight back or um a lap pull at the gym where you're pulling a resistance band wide and down really working on that upper back because shortening those upper back muscles complemented by your strengthening uh, sorry your lengthening and your stretching of your chest muscles will help really pull you back into that good postural position and stop any shoulder rounding um, and then if you've got problems with mobility in your shoulder straight after surgery make sure you get referred to a physiotherapist because you want to regain that full mobility in your shoulder because yeah. you know most women that are being diagnosed still have very active lives and you don't want to not be able to get your hand over your head so yeah. see a physio and then once you've kind of nailed that mobility um, then we can start introducing a little bit more weight and a little bit more strength to the upper body. Oh, brilliant. Um, another question is how can um, or does exercise impact lymphedema? Does it cause it or is it of benefit and if I if somebody has lymphedema um, is it um, is it bad for 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 that person? Um, so it's going to depend patient to patient, but the research now is showing that actually certain types of exercise can be particularly beneficial for lymphedema. Um, so if you have lymphedema, you need to be wearing a compression garment, garment while you're exercising. 
Um, and things like weight training, so very light weights to begin with, can actually help reduce the lymphedema in your upper limbs, for example. Um, if you haven't developed lymphedema yet, it can be a preventative measure. So more and more research is, is showing that actually using weights regularly, that movement is helping with that lymphatic drainage in the affected areas. So it is recommended, but the recommendation is to not go too heavy with the weight too quickly. Um, don't, if you weight trained before, go back to your weight that you finished with before you had your treatment. Right. You need to build back up gently. Right. And like with any medicine, you need to see how you respond the next day before you then go and prescribe yourself more. So um, be aware of the signs of progression of lymphedema or actual um, initiation of lymphedema. Be aware of those signs of swelling, redness, hotness and report them to your oncology team if you feel any of those things so that they can treat it as early as possible. But in theory, strength training should help benefit um, your lymphedema and there's more and more research to back this now. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, how often should I exercise? Well, um, if I had anything to do with it, uh, every day, um, but the walking every day, because for the brain, as much as it is for the body, you need to get outside. If it's raining, do it anyway. Uh, take an umbrella, wear some better clothes, go outside every single day, 20 minute walk. That's really important. Keeping up the cardiovascular exercise. So the recommendations, and I know these are recommendations, you might not be able to do this at the start, but something to work up to is around 150 minutes minimum. It's somewhere between 150 and 300 that you should be doing of a moderate paced cardiovascular activity. So that's a decent walk. It's somewhere where you can, you can talk to somebody but you can't sing. So you're kind of a bit breathy um, or you're on a gentle cycle ride um, or you're doing a gentle swim. Um, right. So, or hoovering brilliant um so <laughs> remember that's 150 to 300 minutes a week so a day half an hour max yeah um, not 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 much is it as in you know right. it's not arduous if you think about it that way well if you're going on the school run or you're walking the dog you know you've got half an yeah. hour in your belt pretty quickly um Easy. the thing yeah. that's harder and this is the area where i tend to help more and more people is the strength training so you need to try and introduce two strength or resistance sessions a week um, these can be home workouts, but it's a, um, a type of exercise where you are building muscle mass. So if you're walking, you're more working your heart and your lungs, you're not really building your muscle mass. So focusing on something where you're having to put effort through your muscles, that's strength and resistance training. Um, and that's the area that most people need to build into their routine. And it doesn't have to be a long workout, you know, 20 minutes is enough. Um, yeah. and, um, lots of free videos on my YouTube channel if people want to get started. Um, but really simple equipment that you can use at home um, to get you going, but that will really help with every other element of your life as well in terms of movement, if you're strength training. Great. So messages, cardiovascular, um, you know, exercises, walking, that's the easiest thing really, isn't it? But as you said, gardening, hoovering, housework. Um, anything that gets you slightly out of path, that's that's good. And then strength training, which is something that it doesn't come naturally necessarily. It's something that you have to be mindful to incorporate into, into your exercise routine. Yeah. Um, is there such a thing as doing too much exercise? Yes, there is. Um, so particularly after cancer, you need to leave a rest day in between your more intense days. So if you do a strength training session, the next day, just go for your walk, but make it a little bit gentler. Um, see how you are the next day. By the end of that day, you can think about maybe doing another one the day after, but perhaps even leave two days to begin with. Um, but there is too much. There is such thing as too much exercise. If your body can't recover from an exercise session, it's not going to be 
building the type of muscle and fitness that you want. Um, lots of people over-exercise, they don't see results, and that's because they're not getting the sleep and the rest and the recovery time that they need. So it is important to have that recovery time, particularly in strength training. It's not beneficial to go to the gym seven times a week because it, it won't help. You need to leave those days for recovery so that your body can rebuild the muscle. Because if you think about it, strength training is basically kind of almost like a tear in the muscle and then a rebuild of, of more muscle fibers. So if you're not giving it a chance to do that, it's not going to be helping you get stronger. Um, so definitely leave those recovery days, drink plenty of water, eat protein across every single meal, because that will help with your cancer recovery as much as your muscle recovery. Um, and take a day where you, you know, you get good sleep and you just go on that gentle walk that day. Great. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. This has been um, really, really helpful. And for everybody who is watching, um, this uh, conversation is part of a, um, a kind of a, sh this is a shorter version of a longer podcast. And the longer version of the podcast will be dropping sometime in the future. So um, listen out for that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Hope it's been useful. Sarah, thank you so much. I will leave um, all the links that Sarah mentioned in the show notes below. Um, any more advice, Sarah, before we go? Uh, just have fun. That's the most important thing about exercising right. is that you enjoy it. Don't do it because you have to do it because you want to. Yeah, that's a great advice. And yeah, everybody um, check out Sarah um, on her YouTube channel. I'll leave the links down below. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.